Luke 10, 19, he gave the disciples and the apostles and the people this power. He said, did I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions? And that's that same word in there as it is about taking up serpents. He gave them power over serpents and scorpions and over all the rest of the power of the enemy. That nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. That that Kenneth has been talking about, about taking up serpents, he said that he give us a power that we could heal the sick and we could raise the dead and cast out devils because freely we had received of him and we could freely give it to people. I'm freely going to give you something tonight. And it's going to be the word of God. That's all I can give you. Jesus, the living word. But, but how do you know? Now, I don't want you to cause you to doubt your salvation, but how do you know that you're really born again if you won't even say that you believe that God will heal people? We try to work the word of God and to do the works of God and we don't see it work, and then we say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm going to go to heaven. If we can't, if we can't believe that God has healed us, and we don't believe that God has delivered us from the penalty of sin, then how do we know that we're born again? I think about things like this. And I'm saying this out of my heart. I'm not saying this to be rough and tough in no way, because a God is a good God. And I believe with all my heart, I know, Kenneth, that God has performed something in my body that very desperately needed to be performed in the last little bit. I mean that needed to be bad, done, or needed good to be done. And I'm thankful. Bless God, I'm thankful. I finally quit trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. I believe this and I believe this and I believe what you said. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I finally told him, I said, God, I've done all I know to do. I can't do nothing else. I believe with all my heart that you paid the price. Now, I, I can't do nothing else. It's all up to you. And he let me know that's all I wanted you to do anyway was just to get out of the way and believe me because it's like what you told me. I've done it. Just believe it and receive it and let's go on. want to come down here tonight, Brandon. I'm rambling a little bit. Come down here tonight and I was praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. And I've been praying, like it says in the Bible, it says when you're praying in an unknown tongue, pray that you'll interpret also. And I, I, that come to my mind, and the Lord gave me a few words about people that God wouldn't receive because they just didn't like their mannerisms or they didn't like the way they looked. They didn't like the way they spoke or they didn't like something. And God showed me that and talked to me about that. And he said, it don't make no difference where it comes from as long as it's my word. If it's my word, it don't make no difference where it comes from. Don't matter. Don't matter. He spoke to an old donkey, a jackass, to God's prophet. It's the word. Speak the word out. It's just the word. The Word. But God dealt with me about that. And that might make me feel good when you got to talking about that. I mean, a barren witness of my spirit. Because a lot of times, I think we're all guilty of that. We'll, we'll see something or somebody and we'll think, well, I don't know. There's something about them I don't much like. If they're speaking the Word, take it and go with it. Bless God, it's good. I'll guarantee you if they had a $100 bill or a pile of them laid out there, their mannerisms or the way they look wouldn't bother you, even if they stunk and smelled bad, would it? You'd take that money and run with it, wouldn't you? The Word of God's worth more than riches and silver and gold. Amen? Let's go to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. 
keeping your mind that Jesus, Jesus didn't, uh, he didn't go around telling people that, that you need to get saved. You're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. I want to tell you how to get born again. All you got to do is just believe that I'm going to die for you and after you're dead and all this and that and other. Just repent and, and uh, you need to get saved. He didn't do that, did he? I believe he had the proof was in the pudding. I believe we need to be like that. I'm just going to start and read here. I'm just going to read some scriptures. 